Hello friends, this video on motion part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now in the next section we will talk about the equations of motion. So we will now talk about a very important topic. We will talk about equations of motion. So what are these equations of motion? Basically these are a set of three equations which relate some of the quantities which describe the motion of an object. So on the basis of whatever we studied so far, what did you observe? What are the quantities that are needed to describe the motion of an object? Well, the quantities are displacement, velocity, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time taken. So these are some of the quantities which all together can describe the motion of an object. Whether the object is at rest or the object is moving, if the speed of the object increasing with time or the speed of the object is constant. So all such details can be obtained with the help of one or more of these quantities. So equations of motion are a set of three equations which establish relationship between displacement which is denoted by S, time taken denoted by T, initial velocity U, final velocity V and acceleration A. So these are some of the quantities which are linked to each other by these three equations of motion. So what are those three equations? They are often known as kinematic equations of motion. Why are they called kinematic? The word kinetic means something in motion, right? So the kinematic equations are, the first equation is V is equal to U plus AT. The second equation is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. And the third equation is V square is equal to U square plus 2 AS. So these are the three equations of motion. Now these equations are taken, I mean these are the general forms of these equations. For example, suppose yeah, if there is a scenario where you have negative acceleration or retardation, in that case your A becomes negative. So the equation will become V is equal to U minus AT, right? So these equations are the general form of equations. And you should remember these three equations. Now, these three equations together can describe the motion of any object. So now, before we uh, look at the applications of these equations, because their applications are more important, but before that, we will look at the derivation of these equations. So from where did we derive these three equations? So let us first try to derive the first equation. So the first equation is pretty simple. So far, we know that as per definition of acceleration, what is acceleration? Acceleration is rate of change of velocity, right? That is acceleration. So what does that mean? That means change of velocity with time. So change of velocity is final velocity minus initial velocity upon time. So from this, you can see that AT is equal to V minus U or you can say V is equal to U plus AT. So this equation is nothing but another representation of the definition of acceleration. So we directly derive the first equation from, of motion from the definition of acceleration. Now let us have a look at the second equation that is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. So how do we derive this equation? Now in this second equation we have to basically derive an expression for displacement because S denotes displacement. Now in order to get displacement which graph can help us? The area under the velocity time graph gives us displacement. Correct? So let us look at this velocity time graph. So we have taken a generalized velocity time graph. Suppose we have a velocity time graph which is represented this way. Now we have to find out the displacement of this object. We know that the area under the curve is equal to displacement. So what is the area under this curve? So if you join this line, this would be the area under this curve. Right? So how do we find this area? Now please forget about these numerical values here. Here we are trying to derive it. So let us say this point is O, this point is B, this point is B, 
This point is A and this point is some point C. Let us join this line so we get a point D. So basically we have to find out the area of the triangle BCD plus the area of this rectangle OADB. Right? So area under the curve will be equal to area of triangle BCD plus area of rectangle OADB. Right? So what would be the area of the triangle BCD? That is half into base into height. So for BCD, what is the base? Base is BD. Right? So this would be BD into height. Height is CD. Right? Plus area of the rectangle. So this will be length into breadth. That is equal to OA into OB. Right? Now by looking at this graph, what do you see? It shows that as time increases, the velocity increases from this point to this point. That means this refers to this point, refers to the initial velocity u and this point c corresponds to the final velocity v. Right? So that means this value is u and this value is v. Right? And this value is small t. So that is how we denote things. So we are using the same denotion here to avoid confusion. So in this case, half into BD. What is BD? BD is nothing but T. CD. What is CD? CD is nothing but V minus U. Plus OA. OA is again T into OB. OB is again U. So this is equal to half v minus u into t plus ut. So this is equal to half vt minus half ut plus ut. So this is equal to so this becomes equal to okay one second I mean there was no need to break it up actually. Now, if you look at it, V minus U into T. As per definition of acceleration, what is acceleration? It is V minus U by T. So, you can write V minus U is equal to A T. Right? So, this V minus U can be written as A T into T plus U T. So, this is equal to U T plus half A T square. And what is this area under the curve? This is displacement. So, S becomes equal to UT plus half AT square. Right? Okay. Now, let us look at the third equation. That is V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. Now, from the second equation, from second kinematic equation, we saw that S is equal to UT plus half a t square. But now we need an equation which doesn't have p. An equation excluding t. So what do we do? In the same equation, we can put the value of p is equal to v minus u divided by a. From where did we get this? We got it from the first equation that is v is equal to u plus a t. So from this equation, we can say that t is equal to v minus u by a. So we put this value of t in this equation. So therefore, s becomes equal to u into v minus u by a plus half into a into t squared. That is v minus u divided by a whole square. So this becomes equal to u v divided by a minus u square by a plus half a v square plus u square minus 2 uv divided by a square. So this becomes equal to uv by a minus u square by a plus half v square by a plus half u square by a minus uv by a. 
So plus UV by A minus UV by A will get cancelled. So we are left with minus u square by a plus half u square by a that is minus half u square by a plus half v square by a. So this is equal to s. So from this we can say 2as is equal to v square minus u square. So from this we can say v square is equal to u square plus 2as. Here we arrive to the third equation of motion. So these are the three equations of motion and now we will see that using these three equations of motion we will be able to solve so many problems. So let us look at problem 1. It states a bus starting from rest moves with a uniform acceleration of 0 0.1 meter per second square for 2 minutes. So that means the acceleration of the bus. Okay, the bus starts from rest, so initial velocity would be 0. Acceleration is 0 0.1 meter per second square. And it attains this acceleration for 2 minutes. So time taken is 2 minutes. So that is 1 minute is 60 seconds. So therefore, this would be 2 into 60. That is 120 seconds. So we have to calculate in the first part speed acquired that is we have to calculate v so from the first kinematic equation v is equal to u plus 80 so that is equal to 0 plus 0 0.1 into 120 so this comes out to be 12 meter per second so this is the speed acquired in the second part it asks us to calculate the distance traveled that is s so from the second equation we can say s is equal to ut plus half at squared so this will be equal to, so now in this case u is 0, so this comes out to be 0 plus half into a is 0 0.1 into t squared, that is 120 into 120. So this will be 60 and this comes out to be 720 meters. So 720 meters is the distance travelled by the bus. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.